name is Clover Hutchinson and I'm an occupational therapist. I've been in the field for over 21 years. I've decided to create a video for the novice splinter and this um, video is intended to provide basic skills on how to fabricate a cock up splint from start to finish. At the end of this video you'll be able to first create the pattern and identify the appropriate or associated landmarks and ultimately, at the end, fabricate a cock up spray. Okay, before we get started on making the pattern and the splint, we are going to need a few materials and supplies. First, you're going to need paper for your pattern, a crayon for outlining your pattern, as well as for transferring the pattern onto your splint material a utility knife for scoring the the split material initially to allow easy cutting scissors for cutting your pattern as well as cutting your splint a spatula to transfer your split material from the splint pan as the water is very hot a towel to remove excess water from your split material before actually um, laying it on your patient Cold spray if you desire, fast and quick hardening of your split material. Strapping, hook and loop to secure the splint to the extremity. A heat gun. A heat gun is used to flare edges, to smooth edges, or to bubble out um, areas to prevent pressure marks, especially to the radial and ulnar stylite area. Splint material, um, as you can see, you can have different thickness. Um, there's also color. Choice of split material thickness it will be based on your comfort level as well as the goal, purpose, and function of your splint. I strongly suggest the use of an arm elevator for positioning of the arm so you can go ahead and have gravity as an assist. And lastly, the splint pen. First, you want to make sure that the patient's hand is positioned firmly onto the paper. Wrist is at neutral. Then you want to position the fingers so you can clearly make your marks. The first mark is going to be at the MC head of the index. The second, the MC head of the fifth digit. You draw a line to the second web space, then the radial styloid and the ulna styloid. Now you want to make sure that you extend your pattern between a half inch to an inch so that it will come up midway the width of the trough on the forearm and make sure you mark out two-thirds the length of the forearm patient can remove the hand and now we're gonna connect the dots you connect the MC heads the small and the index finger then you extend the line from the second web space all the way down into the body of the pattern. You connect the marker from the index and you're gonna curve around and connect it to the radial styloid to create that web space by that thinner clearance. And then you complete the pattern. You extend that portion to make the pommel bar. Okay, now that you have your pattern, remember the purpose of your pattern is so you will measure twice and cut once. Okay, so you want to make sure your splint, I'm sorry, your pattern is fitting nicely. That it's two thirds the length of the forearm, the C bar or the pommel bar does not extend past the second um, 
digit, okay, that the top of the splint is resting at the distal palmal crease. You have your thenar eminence nicely cleared and it goes up at least half or midway the length of the forearm. Okay, so once you've cut your splint out, you're going to go ahead and put it in the splint pan to soften the splint material to make it moldable. We've now transferred the pattern onto the split material and we've cut our splint out. Make sure you remove the excess water. Just check to make sure it's not too warm before you apply it to your patient. Okay, use the arm elevator to help support the wrist and have the patient position their wrists in a manner to maximize the benefits of gravity. Okay, so you wanna gently use broad strokes on the trough to minimize pressure marks. Okay, you can have the patient make that okay sign, okay, to make sure that the splint will rest when the hand is in that functional position. Okay, make sure you actually mold it on. Okay, okay you want to make sure the patient turns the hand over you see that it's midway up the trough and this bar does not extend beyond the second digit. Okay, there we have it. Next step will be to just double check for fitting any sharp edges if, and if they are, go ahead and smooth those out and then you will apply your straps. Before you put your splints on, go ahead and just put the little marks to indicate where you're going to attach the straps. You'll need three. One for the um, proximal end of the forearm, one for the wrist, and one at the distal palmal crease. So we will go ahead and put our straps on. And sometimes, you know, I will leave an extended piece for the patient um, to adjust the tightness of the splint. Other times, I may just make the ends meet um, neatly. It depends on what the patient likes or just how much assistance the patient needs in securing the splint onto the, the extremity. Okay. So as you can see, we have our splint. Can you oppose all your digits? Okay. Remember with a wrist cock up splint, the patient should be able to write while the splint is on. And there you have it. This is what you, we call from start to finish the fabrication of a cock up splint. Thank you very much. I hope this video would be enlightening and encourage you to pursue splinting and to enjoy the process.